What's up everyone, welcome back to Guns.com, my name is Seth and today we're taking a look at the 2022 Dark Horse entry into the concealed carry world from Smith & Wesson, the all metal CSX. This gun has a lot going for it, it has a lot of things that I really love about it. It's also got a couple things that I don't love about it. Let's dive in and find out whether the CSX is right for you. CSX was a bit of a dark horse, a bit of a head scratcher, I guess, if you will, when they first announced it right before SHOT Show in 2022. And the reason I say that, the reason even Smith & Wesson called it a dark horse, is because it's a total departure from what the company has been doing for the past 15 or 20 years or so. This is an aluminum alloy framed gun, and for most of the past 15 or 20 years, the pistols that have been coming out of Smith & Wesson have been polymer striker fired pistols. So to see this little aluminum frame pistol come out was definitely a bit of a head scratcher. It's also not striker fired, it's hammer fired, but it does boast a very impressive 12 plus one capacity with the extended magazine or 10 plus one with the flush fit. Um, this gun has been cleared. It also has ambidextrous features, including the slide stop here, and they're quite easy to use. Also the safety, fully ambi as well. The mag release can be swapped from right to left if you so choose, or if you're a lefty. The pistol is single action only, which should lend to a more accurate pistol, but more on that in a minute. We'll get into range thoughts in just a minute here. Um, it is meant to be carried like a 1911, that is to say it's meant to be carried cocked and locked. So it's important that Smith & Wesson did include those ambidextrous features on here, I think. So this brings up the really great question of why did Smith & Wesson make this pistol? What is the point of making this pistol in this day of polymer, you know, striker-fired pistols? And I think Smith & Wesson saw a market opportunity here. Obviously, they, they had to have or else they wouldn't have made it, right? I think the market opportunity is that for years, if you wanted a small micro-compact pistol like this, and you wanted those 1911 style controls with it, you would be limited to guns such as the SIG P938, Kimber EVOs, or any 1911 that's kind of commander style length, right? And all of those have some round limitations when compared to the CSX. The CSX boasts, you know, a lot more rounds than a SIG P938. So I think Smith saw that there's this opportunity to serve people who are looking for a metal frame gun that is hammer fired, that has 1911 style controls, and want more capacity. And I think that's why you've been seeing these sell really well recently because there are there is a big market out there for it now am i the person in the market for this not necessarily but there are guys who really like to carry 1911 style commander length pistols and if they want more rounds now they have the option with the csx so what do i really really like about this gun well there's a number of things that i like about it and the first off uh, i kind of talked about already it's surprisingly light in fact it's lighter than the shield plus that I already have. So that's, that's one big positive for this gun, especially with the high capacity that it does have. The other thing that I really like about it, ambi controls, super easy to use, super easy to actuate. I didn't have any problems dropping the slide on this gun from either side, and that was with or without it around in the chamber. So very nice there. It's a Smith and it just ran. You know, I put about 400 rounds of ammo through this gun, everything from Federal, to Winchester, some SMB, and even some old Wolf steel case. I had a single malfunction with some of that Wolf steel case 
Uh, that ammo is very old. It may have been exposed to a bit of moisture. So I'm not totally ready to blame that malfunction solely on the gun. That could have totally been an ammo related issue. Um, you know, Smith has a great reputation for being extremely reliable. Uh, every Smith and Wesson gun I've ever owned has been extremely reliable. I've, I've had zero issues with them. And this gun continues that lineage, I think. It's going to be... You can also get a, a good grip on this gun. I don't know if you can see that, but I can get a full grip on this gun with the 12-round extended magazine, which, of course, compared to the 10-round extended magazine, if you can see here, there's really... That's really not that much of a difference. So why you wouldn't always carry the 12-round extended magazine is beyond me. But there might be some people who have smaller hands who want to carry the 10 round magazine. But grip is also where I start running into some issues with the gun and we'll go over that in just a second. But let's quickly go over the last few things that I really like about this gun. The other thing I really really like about this pistol is the slide serrations. Compared to almost every other Smith & Wesson pistol that I've come across, these slide serrations are really nice. And if you've been watching my reviews for any amount of time, especially my Smith & Wesson reviews, you know that the one thing that I harp on on Smith & Wesson pistols is the slide serrations. I think that on the M&P lineup, it's just not enough. They could do a much better job of being aggressive. I wish they would take these slide serrations on this pistol and put them on the M&P lineup, put them on the Shield Plus, because they're much easier to activate. They're much easier to grip, to get a hold of. I just like them a lot better. They work a lot better. The last thing I'd say that I really like about this gun is that the trigger pull is nice and light and crisp. It's a nice single action trigger pull. So I like the trigger pull, but the trigger reset, mm, not so much. I have an issue with the trigger reset. The, the major issue that I have is that there's a false reset to it. Um, in fact, there almost seems to be two false resets to it, which inevitably led me to short stroke the gun a lot of times, more times than I would have liked. So that's kind of an issue, I think, for me at least. Uh, I'm somebody who definitely likes to ride the reset of a gun, and really, especially when dry firing, you're really trying to find that reset point so you can get back on target, back on trigger, and get those follow-up shots as quick as possible. Well, if you have a false reset or two, um, that's going to be really difficult. So unless you're somebody who really slaps the trigger, that might be an issue for you. So the trigger reset to me is a big issue. Um, you know, whether we've been live firing or whether I've been dry firing, it's an issue. And I, I'd like to just go tabletop here for a second, show you a couple dry fires and kind of show you what I've been talking about. And then maybe we can even see it in a live fire situation as well. All right, everyone, I just wanted to go over the trigger reset issue that I was having here quickly on a dry fire scenario, so you can kind of just see what I'm, what I'm talking about. Uh, so as you can see, this gun is clear. There is no ammunition in the room. So I'll show you just the regular trigger pull first. You get to the wall right there, hit the wall almost immediately. And then the, the, the break isn't too bad, it takes a little bit of effort, not the worst break, not the best. But where I start running into issues is with the reset, and you, you're going to maybe see it, you might hear it, you obviously won't feel it because you're not here, but I think you'll hear it, so... Consistently... This is where I found my first trigger reset point issue. I would ride it to that point. I mean, you can kind of hear that. And I'm not... That's where I would constantly get hung up. If I go a little bit further... there's. You, I don't know if you heard that second one, but there's almost a second one there that... is if you're someone who likes to ride the reset though those will catch you those will catch you there's your there is the actual reset
Now, Smith & Wesson did tell me, you know, put a couple hundred rounds through this gun and the trigger will start to smooth out a little bit. I'm probably at about 400 rounds with this gun right now. I have not found the trigger to smooth out any more than really, I mean, maybe a little bit more than when I first got it. But the reset issue is still there, and I, I guess I just don't expect that reset issue to go away with the round count continuing to climb. It seems like it's an inherent issue with the gun right now. So I think that's something that, you know, if they come out with CSX 2.0, that's something that Smith & Wesson should address, in my opinion. So the trigger reset issue might be able to be trained around, especially if you're someone who likes to slap the trigger or if you want to train yourself to take your finger all the way off the trigger every time you, you pull it, you know, upon reset, then you could possibly train around that trigger reset issue. That's actually surprising that I was able to um, do a mag dump that quickly without having the trigger kind of mess with me, I guess. Because normally when, you know, I'm trying to reset it and uh, I feel that reset, but I guess when you're just rapid firing like that, it's really not too big of an issue. But the second big issue I have with this gun and one that I don't think I can train around is that this gun for me, for my hands, delivers some serious slide bite to the point that Mm, I don't really feel like shooting it after about a hundred rounds. It gets, I mean, it's a little painful. It's more annoying than anything, but it's like if you're shooting your gun, you're training with your gun, do you really want to put slide bite on your hand all the time just going out to try and enjoy yourself and enjoy your training? My answer would be no, which is why I would not make this my primary carry gun. Now, that being said, I have pretty fat hands, you can see that right there, especially the web of my hand, real meaty, right? So you can see when we get up on this gun, you can kind of see right there how my hand is, is the web of it is almost too fat, right? So it wants, the slide wants to constantly kind of eat at that right there. Now I let other buddies of mine who don't have big fat hands like mine try this out and shoot it and they didn't have any issue with slide bite at all. So if you got big fat hands like mine, you got big meaty, you know, web right there, this might be an issue for you. It's certainly something I would consider uh, before you go and purchase the gun. So on the range, I also found that accuracy for me w was a bit of an issue. Now I'm not the most accurate shooter in the world. I'm not a competition shooter. I don't claim to be a tactical operator or anything like that. I'm just your average gun owner. But uh, in terms of accuracy, the Shield Plus that I had, the Performance Center that I have, both way more accurate than this gun, uh, which is a bit of a surprise given the single action trigger. I thought for sure I'd be able to group rounds a little bit tighter with this gun, but it just hasn't been the case. I haven't been able to figure it out where it's been super accurate for me ever. Not the same way that the Shield Plus was accurate for me right out of the box. The Shield Plus just ran for me right out of the box. I always felt like I was very accurate with it. And this gun, I just have not found that same success. So that's kind of like the last little knock I have on it. So where does this gun fit in for you? Where does it fit in for me? For me, it is not a, a primary carry gun. It's not a home defense gun either. I could see it if I started carrying a backup gun, maybe I could use it as a backup gun because it does boast an impressive capacity. It is very lightweight and that's where I would recommend it as a backup gun. It, it's, it would serve very nicely there. If you're somebody who likes to slap the trigger, it might serve nicely as a primary gun for you. Um, but for me, just not gonna happen, not working. Well, that's it guys, that's my review of the CSX. I'm curious if you've shot one, what do you think? Please leave us a comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And going forward, you know, we always like to incorporate your comments into our reviews. So we'd love to hear from you. Please drop us a comment down below. If you're looking for your own CSX, head on over to guns.com. We got plenty of great deals going on. You're not gonna wanna miss them. If you like this video, Please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We got plenty of great videos coming out every single week. You're not going to want to miss those either. Until next time, everyone, have fun on the range. Stay safe out there.